There are areas and places in the heavens, and each one is specifically um, designed and made to perform certain tasks. Now, the one that I know of you know, is all hooked up to an area of, a, of an existence which focuses straight down onto my planet, which is Earth. So, part, part of my existence and my job is to keep an eye on Earth. Also, part and parcel of my job is to keep an eye on man and to make sure that man is behaving and basically uh, is, in good, is in good order. Something of which at this moment in time I don't find it, but anyway, good order, I'm talking. <clears throat> so, anyway, because of all of this, right, and because of the transcendent, and I have transcendent, and it does exist, the transcendence of physical understanding in the physical flesh exists, something which I have proven and something which I know is physically real. And it encompasses all science, and all known knowledge, and all known existences of how to get to heaven. So, in the heavens we have various different regions, various regions in the heavens, and these regions are designed and created and made for certain purposes, and it covers the whole diverse, complex mix of creation and the mathematics of creation. So each one concentrates on certain areas of the known system. Now the known system, if you're going to look at it in any frame for your mind, is like this. Now like I said before, it's not perfect and it's not necessarily round. But to explain it is how I'm going to explain it. A round existence Right? with all of its layers and all of its uh, densities all the way down to physical visibility <coughs> and the only way I can describe this is that in the heavens there are different areas so around all like the earth right? and it has let's say this is an explanation and not necessarily the physical reality of how it actually is because you'll only find that out when you get there if you can imagine the heavens as well and if you can imagine the heavens like the earth, and if you can imagine the heavens like um, has areas like the earth has um, uh, land mass, the earth has land mass, the heavens have regions of management, regions of management, places, right? And they are just as multi diverse. And one region will manage, let's say, a region of the existence of the known. Uh, reality of life, and another area will manage a totally different region of a totally different area of the management which we know as life. Now life, when I talk about it, encompasses all things. So I'm talking about physical life and cellular life, I'm talking about planetary life of inert life, I'm talking about uh, uh, stellar life and stellar bodies, so we're talking about suns and planets, then we talk about um, the life of solar systems and then we talk about the life of galaxies and then we talk about the life of clusters of galaxies and then we talk about the life of the blackness of the darkness of space then we talk about the life of dark matter the life of time and the life of mathematical principles and when things are going to come to an end because of the mathematical calculations have run its course and something else, an equation pops out, and something else new grows from the mathematical principle that did exist, but no longer doesn't exist in the reality of life, but is then earmarked and placed as knowledge of memory of information into a place very close to the heavens. It's stored, and it's kept there because this new life that has calculated our, uh, a brand new sun is requiring the backbone of the framework for it to exist. Right? So, even though all of these different areas in the heavens have different tasks and different jobs to do, they are all just as an, an integral um, uh, saturation, 
to the existence of everything else. Now because we are part and parcel of the heavenly management and also part and parcel of the heavenly um, realm, part of my job as an angel on earth is to ensure that you not get to know about it. So don't forget, if you exist and your mind exists, and your brain exists, and your flesh and your body, and your eyes exist, that will accept the knowledge of the rainbow. And if all of your structure of your framework, and your chemistry, and all the principles of mathematics that put you together exist, it also means that you exist in the heavens as well. Now part of the message to the earth is this. If you be good, you will have a usefulness in the heavens. It's called being obedient to creation and obedient to life. And if you are obedient, then you are accepted and you are in. If you're disobedient and you are continually in the mindset of being disobedient, there is what we call the holding day, or something similar, right? It means you're in, but not in the area of where the others go. They are all eternal. These places are eternal. You can have eternity of obedience, or you can have an eternity of disobedience. And in your eternity of disobedience, you are made to be useful. You are made to be useful and you are made to be of value. But there is a price to pay. In the realm of disobedience, there is a pain. And that knowledge of pain is the knowledge of your existence of disobedience. And in some cases, if it's not something which is um, easily uh, uh, managed or maintained, this can drive um, a living eternal life um, into something um, of utter and total suffering. Now it's not us that do this. It's the life of the person that created it, that, that builds this. All of this disobedience, right, can be eliminated. It all can be eliminated and all of this can change. Now the message to the disobedient is this, or is this. If you are part and parcel hooked up, which some are, and most, if not all, are hooked up to this link. Some disobedient have a link to the heavens of the obedience, the ones that are obedient. And there is a life cycle in the reality of life. And your ancestors of ancestry, right, can change. And this disobedient side of creation, when the changes happen, in the genetical life, all of this lot is freed up. This eternity of disobedience starts to um, wax and wane away. Because when you're born, even though you have a life of disobedience, you were born in obedience. And because you were born in obedience, I became disobedient and died as a disobedient. Your ancestry of your relatives, if they ever change their mind and become obedient and, and, and useful to creation, all of the disobedient time periods change and they change to the point where you become the born obedient person that you were before. But it's only because of them and the future created the change in the first place. Now in creation, all of this is written in to exist because it's called evolution. 
Evolution exists 